Leon Bino is in. Just walked in. How are you, Leon? I'm good, thank you. Pull up a, pull up a, are you going to have a scone? Yeah, I'll have a scone. Good boy. How's your day? Good, excellent. What are some Gee. of your, what are some of your nice memories? Oh. Tell us while I get you a scone. People ringing up and needing help and me just having to have the right contacts to help. That's yeah. happened a lot. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot in having contacts. Yeah. Do you have a still have a contact book? Oh yes, it's in my head. Ah, that's interesting. Because we're quite convinced that you have a um, uh, a Shazam mind. You can hear <laughs> you hear a song and you can tell people exactly who wrote it and who sang it and when what year it came out and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. How how did that happen? Have you got a good memory? Per se? Well, I think I probably have. Good recall. You must have. Mm. Yeah. Mm. While I'm not a musician, um, I have a good sense of music. Mm. And I can, when I think of a song, it actually hits my head in the right note. A song, a music is like a time machine, though, because it imprints in your brain yes. when it happened. Yes. Mm. And a, a song will take you back to that yep. year. And all the things but is it a, is it something that is instilled in your mind, or is it just you just related to where you were and what you were doing at that time? It's Maybe a bit not, of everything. Yeah, not everyone's mm. mind works the same it's way. A, but a lot of people can relate music back to yeah. a, a point in time. Do you have favorite a favorite era? Well, the eighties was good. Really? Yeah, there oh. were some good songs. No, you, you, in actual fact. There's great songs from each era. So it really depends on your taste as to which era you prefer. But, I mean, 70s had good hits, 80s did, 90s did. Um, Oh, I can't remember too many things out of the 90s. Isn't that when hip-hop and all that... uh, Oh, that's been around for a while. It's just been narrative with sort of beat. That's hip-hop, what I call it. It's sort of... uh, It's not really music. No, it's sort of gangster um, music from the streets of New it's York, sort of or something. Narration with beat. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Yes, it's like break dancing. What did you think of the? What was her name, Caroline? The lady who, who Ray. <laughs> Ray Ban? No, Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Yeah, yeah. Since when is break dancing an Olympic sport? Ah, oh, look, it's an art form, but it's not a sport. No, I think it's a, it's a calling or it's an occupation. Yeah, or yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's an art form. It's not yeah. a sport. Not a sport. Yeah. It's not, it's not like endurance where you have to train mm. uh, uh, and get your oxygen intake up and all that sort of stuff. It's not really any of that. No. I mean, people who do it well look good, mm. but it is – you've got to have a sense of rhythm and – yeah, but spinning right. around on your head, <laughs> apart from it being probably bad for you, yes, uh, I don't see the point. Well, look, <laughs> a lot of a lot of those artistic pursuits seem pointless. Yeah, I suppose that's that's one way of putting it. Are you, are you bored with life at the moment? No, not really. You find enough to do. Yep. Yes, I um. <clears throat> I'll bet you have people stop you in the street and say, "Why aren't you on radio?" Stacks of them. Yeah. And what do you say to them? <clears throat> uh, it's not my decision. <laughs> uh, strange decisions. I was talking to Dennis Walter a little bit earlier. Yeah. And he was telling me the number of times he's been sacked, the number of times he's had contracts cancelled. Uh, it's a strange business. You do get the feeling that they don't always know what they're doing. No, but you just roll with it. Mm. I suppose you do. I You're only know. one push button away from being sacked. <laughs> oh, actually, sort of one word yeah. away from uh, getting sacked. But we were talking about Kyle and Jackie O earlier, and apparently you can say anything you like on radio now. I'm not so sure that's right, but anyway. Well, you can, you can, but you shouldn't. And uh, I'm sort of old school. Uh, if you're a, on radio, you, you're a guest in somebody's house, and, if it's- you, and you don't swear... Don't walk into somebody's See, me, house and use bad to, language. To me, civility doesn't cost anything. I I happen to believe that civility is a good thing to have, yeah. especially as a broadcaster, and I tend to stick to that. Yeah, me too. Me and, too. And if I can use a word 
that is far better than swearing, then I'll do it. And it's not um, not taught in schools, I don't think. No. Well, education's changed, though, you see. But it hasn't improved. I no. would like to oh, think no, 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 no. change was always yeah. designed to improve. Manners, etiquette, those sort of things, they're like the lubricants of life. Yes, they are. You know, politeness costs nothing. Hmm. Cost nothing. Actually, where you see a lot of abuse these days is what they call keyboard warriors who sit there on Facebook and yes, they're... Yes, but it's the anonymity. That they're they faceless and they're hidden if, and they're if they an- were anonymous. known, they wouldn't do it. And then they mm. say things they regret, but they always get found out because yes. you can track through all that. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, As Brittany Higgins is finding out now with her comments against uh, Linda Reynolds. Well, the social media thing is... is um I guess it was designed to be helpful, productive, useful. Well, in, in an era where everybody can become a publisher, mm. you've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah. Because we live in a world now that is litigious. Yeah. And there is a mob mentality that sometimes if you say things which the collective doesn't agree with, there's a real pile on. Mm. Yeah. So you're really better just, you know, comment on stuff by all means. And just keep it temperate. Mm. Yeah. And if you do that, you're going to be, nine times out of ten, you'll be okay. But you're going to be able to, hopefully, always, um, political correctness and wokeness to one side, we have to be able to express an opinion. Yes. It's not speaking for everyone. But in, in, in ways, uh, in talkback radio, my understanding of it is that you have to be somewhat provocative or the phone doesn't ring. Oh, you do it in an entertaining manner. I, I, uh, I found that you just state an opinion. You mm. get a few experts on, and you'll get you'll get a contest. Yeah, you'll get a contest. It's quite a change over the years. So, because many many years ago, I remember we were always told you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. In other words, you should be able to say what you like to most people. You do that now. And you're going to end up in court because oh, yes, you, you, see, you hurt my feelings a, or you we, a, a racist. We have, a, or, we have a generation now of third parties who take offence on other people's exactly, behalf. Exactly, on behalf of <laughs> That's weird. So they have but, quite a powerful voice in the oh, media well, and Well, I don't know about social powerful, media. Loud, <clears throat> but, um, you know, if you, want, if you want healthy democracy, you have to have a contest of ideas. Well, some of my best friends are lawyers which is a wonderful line. Some of my best friends are lawyers, but I, I tell you, the, a lot of the problem, a lot of the problems that you see people becoming litigious, mm. it's got to be based on the fact that the lawyers... Are the only winners. Well, they, they are the only winners, but they're in there so quickly. Mm. And now we have these uh, class action people who will, will uh, you know, no win... No fee. It mm. sounds very attractive. You'd, you'd, you'd call up a Slater and Gordon or someone mm. because it sounds very attractive. But I never hear anyone sort of say, okay, so we win. How much of the win goes to the lawyers? Most of it. They take a massive percentage. Well, I suppose in a sense they might say they deserve it because there wouldn't be anything without mm. their activity. There's one I got caught up in recently with the 28 Degrees MasterCard, which was hacked about a year ago, I think yeah. it was. And I didn't think there was a big issue because, you know, your licence uh, details are normally so far back when you gave it to them that it would have changed anyway. So the risk to me of any financial loss from that hacking was virtually nil. Anyway, so the, you get emails coming through from a, a legal firm in Melbourne, one of the big ambulance chasing type firms saying, oh, we're launching a class action against Latitude Finance, which used to be GE Money. Do you want to be in it? Do you want to be in it? Yeah, and I just thought, what are you, what are you chasing? I don't think you're going to get. I don't think you're better stand up in court and say our clients had a you know what it is? significant financial loss. A lot but of the people taking the risk. A lot of the people challenged. Just pay it. Or no, that's what's going to happen. That's what will happen. Well, it yeah. it's already is. Yeah. So they'll say just to to go away. We'll give everyone yeah. fifty bucks. Yeah. Whatever, but and then yeah. the lawyers will take <laughs> half of that. So that's uh, what they're doing. Yeah. I don't think there were. In, I, I normally wouldn't say that, but in this case, I don't think there was a, a, a demonstrable, significant, quantifiable loss per client just for having that information. Mm-hmm. Which typically, as I said, your license details or your passport 
runs out after a few years because you get a new licence and you have different security details on the back. So no one can use that to steal uh, your identity. So then, you know, interesting one there. I don't know how that'll pan out. Yeah. Did you have, have you either one of you been sued? No. Not ever sued. No. 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 We've got to do something pretty bad for that. I can't remember. I think somebody had a go at me. Oh, once. look! If you're in business, people are <clears throat> annoying you all the time with uh, frivolous actions and things. But in general, as in a you've just got to be careful what you say and about yeah. who. And if you've got something to say that's a little controversial, be a bit general in mm. where you. Yeah, but you, you only have to turn the words around just a little bit, as I understand it, to avoid any litigation. Yes, For example, correct. you can't say that, that man's a crook. But you can say, I could understand some people thinking that that man is a crook. Yes. Get away with that. Yeah. But you, mm. you say the same sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. It's like, um, um, not that I've been in court, but I, I like that show. Oh, Judge Judy? No, no not no. <laughs> Judge Judy. The, um, uh, it's the, the, the guy who, um, uh, Bull. Oh, yeah. he's a great – that's a great – I watch that all the time. I love that show. Yeah, yeah. My, well, it's on Channel 10. It's the they, best show on Channel 10. Well, Channel 10 <laughs> have got to understand that the only shows that are working are the ones that they are replaying from the exactly. 70s, well, 80s, We had uh, um, Michael um, uh, Mockery on the other day. Yeah. He was in uh, – not Michael, what's his first name? He was in Murder Call in the mid-90s. Oh, yeah, I know who you mean, yeah. Peter Mockery. Peter, Peter Mockery. Peter Mockery, Peter Mockery. Yeah. And I think I said, when we were talking to him, I said, oh, he said, oh, does anyone listen? I said, yeah, I listened to your fantastic mid-90s uh, cop shop show that he had. Yeah, and that's yeah. been replayed on Channel 10 and it's one of the best things on their platform. Mm. Not the new stuff, the singing and voices and... Uh, well, the jump. reality stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the idea of um, the sort of tap dancing that goes on in a court where... Um, you, you're, you're saying to a witness uh, something that you know, the other side is going to stand up and say, objection, you know, and then the judge says, I, I agree, sustained, and the jury will disregard <laughs> that. Uh, but, of course, they won't disregard it as, because they have heard it. As Bob Francis would have said, pig's bottom, they will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't unhear things. You can't, no. And, the, and I've been on a jury and... and well, tell me about that. What was that like? Oh, I loved it. Uh, back in October 2001, yeah. it was a an armed robbery guy down at Seacombe Gardens and he'd gone to the local, his name was, I won't say his second name, Kim, and he'd gone to the local supermarket with a syringe and had poked oh. it in the face of the checkout chick, Renee, yeah. and he stole some money, he'd ran off down the street and his friend saw him running towards his home. And, of course, his mother who shouldn't have been in court, but she was allowed to be in the audience. She testified that, um, no, he, my, my boy was at home at nine o'clock when this crime occurred. And we just thought, well, of course she's going to say that. So we found him guilty because his friend had... Yeah, um, but, he, an, uh, but he had an alibi. He, well, his mother's alibi? Yeah, yeah. Well, then we found out he'd done this sort of thing before, so we felt somewhat vindicated in finding him guilty. So it was an interesting process though, really you know, great to sit through. You and, don't, don't feel a sort of overwhelming uh, responsibility to find somebody well, guilty and know that you're going to send him to jail? You've got 12 other people, well, 11 other people, yeah. so you kind of it's, you know, you've got opportunity to discuss all the facts and figures. And Was that una unanimous among it, the jury? I think it has to be unanimous, yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise you'd, you'd, you know, the judge will say go back in until you agree. Well, um, actually, we had one woman on the first trial that couldn't even speak English. How many trials did you do? Two. Okay. Um, but this lady couldn't speak English and she was just going along with the rest of the crowd. So I, I spoke to the sheriff and said, do you realise your system has let someone through onto a jury who can't even uh, understand English properly? So this nice lady, but she was sitting there just looking around and, and just going along in the What jury. am I doing here? What are all these people doing in my bedroom? Just agreeing with everyone else in the jury room. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they maybe tightened up the system after that, hopefully. I've, I've never been on a jury and I just wouldn't like to sit in judgment on somebody where the – I mean, I, yeah. I, I sit in judgment, I suppose, on topics. Well, this is a like court. Like you do, Leon. Well, this is a court. 
So you are the judge. Well, well, this is the court of public opinion. (laughs) Right, I'm the the judge, the jury, the prosecution, the defence, the whole shebang. Hmm. Um, But I I think that if you didn't want to be on a jury, it would be fairly easy to get off. You'd just stand up and say, he did it! (laughs) I know he did it! (laughs) Well, you you said you watched the bull show on Channel 10. Objection, Your Honour, this jury is not acceptable. You watched the bull show. Yes, 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 I enjoy it. And the whole thing is based around choosing the right jurors, which I don't think that happens in practice by any means. trial science. That's highly... But it's an interesting idea if you yeah, can yeah. if you can have a mirrored jury and you can see exactly how the trial is going and make fine tuning adjustments along the way mm. on that information. It's a good show, but you always know the outcome is going to be successful. In terms he doesn't of, lose, Benny. He never he? loses. No, no. It's, it's a good show. But what do you watch on television, Leon? The news. Yes. Um, what else? I'm not a ba- I'm not a great consumer of free to wear for entertainment, to be honest. Really? Mm. I, I find myself watching uh, YouTube the most these yeah, days. Yeah, I watch the news. I watch news. No, you, YouTube, YouTube. 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 Yeah. Um, a little, little bit of that. Yeah. You've got every – it's the world's best TV channel. Because you can go back uh, a long, long way yes. on YouTube. Yes. Who invented YouTube? Does anybody know? Uh, it came out about 2005 and then Google bought it a couple of years later and they integrated it. So now oh. it's one of their advertising platforms. So – if you don't pay per month, you get adver- adverts. Well, I've got squeezing. YouTube, and I don't think I pay for it. I think you've got YouTube Premium, which means you're paying seventeen dollars a month, as I do. I don't remember signing up for that. Oh, I think I probably put your credit card in for you when you were setting <laughs> it up. Thank you, Tony. Because <laughs> so I make a big thing of the fact that I don't stream anything apart from this well, show. Well, you got your car- credit cards in there. Yeah, for, for for the phone. For uh, the phone, yes, yes. Um, but we sail pretty close to the wind. Yeah, we we, we got nine dollars in there. We'll so just, if you want to ring, we just make it quick. It, we boosted it up. Just <laughs> so you can just press a button and, and spend some more of my money. That's right. Well, Caroline does it. So ah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> why not? Why not? How are the puppies? Puppies are lovely. They're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Do they sleep with you? They've got their own little bed in the bedroom and uh, they snuggle together and, no, it's, they're very much part of the family. Well, I, I, I wake up and I find Bugari lying on her back, head on my pillow, beside me. Yep. Snoring away. That happens sometimes. And, and, and blissfully unaware that she is a dog. She thinks she's a people. Yeah, a lot of dogs think they're people. <laughs> And I, in many I, cases, they're nicer I, than I people. Let, I let mine uh, have that have that theory because I think it. Um, no, I just the animals are beautiful. I've got their own little bed. They do, you know, they're they're pretty mm. obedient. They're very well, very well trained. Does it surprise you? No. My tea. Oh yes, yes. She she drinks Caroline's tea, Bugari. She just gets up when she's feeling a little feeling a little thirsty. Mm. Walks across Caroline's face. And starts to drink the tea, hmm. cold tea. Very weird. <laughs> Be very careful at our place drinking a cup of tea, said mm. he while Leon is taking a sip of his. Now, there's no dog. Oh, yes, there is a dog here, a, a large one. <laughs> it's amazing to me how dogs can speak English. I know they say that they have uh, sort of a small but good vocabulary, yeah. but they really do understand what you're saying yeah yes animals animals know whether you like them yes and um i'm i've always been a dog person so yeah whenever i see a dog the dog will gravitate towards me let me ask you about this uh uh, caroline reminded me that um alain delon uh french actor he died at 88 just this last week this week uh he left a, a, a wish or a desire that his dog, when he died, would be put down and buried with him. Would no. you ever do anything like that? No. It sounds awful, doesn't it? No. Selfish. You don't don't deprive an animal of their, their, their life and uh, that's wrong. Mm. Yes. That's wrong. Yes. Um, Very it's, selfish. It's basically saying, well, if I can't have this, nor can you. Well, uh, although the animal would be lost without its um, oh, yeah, owner. But, but, mm. but at the same time, master. Um, if the person remaining shows care, which nine times out of ten they do, yes. that's a good thing. 
I, I wouldn't. You know, I think animals are beautiful creatures. Mm. I think that very selfish to say, well, if I can't have my dog or yes. cat, yeah. you but, can't I. Mm. No, I wouldn't think like that. But if he was the sole um, person interacting with that animal, maybe the dog or the cat or the bird would be yeah. so upset. I heard this morning, Leon, that self-funded retirees are going to be asked to pay to go into a nursing home. Right? Now, if you if you have no money, it's okay. No problem. It'll They'll just basically take your pension and uh, it'll be fine. The problem is, if you look at the, uh, the message that is sending, what do you think? Socialism. Yeah. <clears throat> if, if, you, if you can pay, I suppose, you should. But the message is just awful. Yeah. It, saying don't be successful in life because uh, it would be far better to enjoy your money, spend it, uh, waste it even. Look. And then when you get to a certain age, you just get on the pension and become a burden on society. There's a very simple principle to this, and that is that if you, if you prepare your own future yeah. and you have your own mattress on which to lay back and have some money, yep. that's probably a good thing. But sometimes governments are a bit uh, two-faced about this because really what they seek to do, particularly once you start moving left, is they actually conspire so that you're reliant upon them. And if you're reliant upon them, you are obedient. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got to do it. You've got to t- t- toe the so line. Yeah. The old saying is, my late father used to say this, the best protection against tyranny is mm. to own stuff. Yeah. And it's right. Can I read you this? Yeah. Um, I have a dear friend, I won't name him, but <clears throat> he, he sends me from time to time things that he thinks I might be interested in. Yeah. And it starts off, when taxes rise... The wealthy flee. They just leave. If you doubt that, um, pol- if you doubt that politicians view the people as economic serfs to be controlled, just have a look at the state of California. It will convince you otherwise. California has been controlled by the left for decades. They were global poster boys for the green dream that has steadily drained the state of businesses, lots of successful businesses. They also embraced the sanctuary city for illegal immigrants while allowing low-value crime to go unpunished. The result is that their streets are filled with homeless, drug-addicted criminals and ordinary people are looking at how they can flee, how they can get out. That's Marxism. The wealthy are leaving California as fast as they can. Some are not even waiting to find a buyer for their mansions as they look for safer and more attractive political climbs. And it's costing them a pretty penny to do so. California has introduced an exit tax for businesses and individuals wanting to leave the state. It's reported to be about 0.4% of your net worth. That does not include the mansion tax payable when a house worth more than $5 million is sold. The tax starts at 4% and rises to 5.5 for homes over $10 million. Yeah. Now the state, run by Democrat Governor Gavin Newsom, is planning to tax fleeing residents for up to 10 years after they leave. That's the price you pay for getting out of a state where Democrat policies are making life miserable for everyone. It's old-fashioned socialism destroying one of the largest economies in the world. Socialists do not see merit in the individual or their success. They see people only as economic units necessary to subsidise the government and the bureaucratic elite. Doesn't this it's, it makes sense, doesn't it? Yep. This is just, to me, this is the Labour Party all over. Mm. They call them the Democrats in uh, America. It goes on, they think they know how to spend your money better than you do. Inevitably, it's spent on something to benefit themselves. Of the tens of thousands leaving the Golden State, most are seeking refuge in a Republican-led operation. The most popular 
a a a Texas, Florida, North Carolina, and South Carolina. It's incredible to think that the free movement of people in a place like the United States is now subject to exit payments due to political mismanagement. As places like California steadily go broke, more of the lefties will leave. No, I'm sorry, more of the lifters. The lefties ain't going to leave. More of the lifters will leave because the greedy government will increase, increasingly target them. That compounds the problem because as capital exits, the mendicants remain. What's that word mean? People relying on the state. Yeah, mendicants. Mendicants, M-E-N-D-I-C-A-N-T-S. Mendicants. This is a direct result of higher taxes. We see the same thing happening in New York. Internationally, the wealth tax in Norway, which was mooted to raise hundreds of millions of dollars, actually saw the overall tax take fall. That was because the rich voted with their wallets and their feet and they left. I can see a similar thing happening in Australia. If insane policy, policies like the non-realised capital gains tax is introduced, while Labor says it'll only apply to superannuation, it's only a matter of time before it will extend across to all investments. Have you heard about that? Yes. The unrealised capital gains tax means that uh, if, if this house has increased in value... It's, it's tax on something that hasn't happened. Yeah, and it's tax before you have realised yeah. yes. the profit. Yes. So what does that mean you have to, to pay the tax, you have to sell the asset because you're being taxed on it? I can understand saying, well, okay, when you sell it, we'll, we'll tax you on your profit. But to, to, to tax you, <laughs> it then extends out and they will say, that painting over there, that's more valuable today than it was last year. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, we'll tax that. Yeah. And so you keep the painting and you find yes. the money to. Yes. That's a bit odd. Socialism. That's what it is. Well, it's something that people, I I people, wouldn't vote people for. People need to understand. Governments that like to redistribute are not good governments because yeah. a good government wants to grow the pie. Yes. A bad government asks only about the size of the piece. That it gets. Yes, <laughs> and, and uh, it wants a bigger piece. Yeah. Uh, under the guise of it's helping the underprivileged, but of course it never is. Well, this is, this is almost finished, but let me just go on. I suspect we can all... I suspect we can also look forward to death duties, higher property taxes, more levies and other financial impositions in Australia as governments go broke. The process seems inevitable, as neither of the major parties care about government debt, nor do they have the fortitude to rein in the socialist policies, as Leon says, the socialist policies that stifle our opportunities. While they'll initially be pitched at the rich, when the wealthy decide to go where they are more welcome, the rest of us will eventually be targeted to pay the bills. Yes. I think I'll keep that because um, I think that is very, very significant. It's a very wise snapshot. Yep. Yeah, well, don't know what we do about it, but we have an election coming up and that might be instrumental. I saw on television last night, Leon, an interesting story. Um, lady standing in front of a kind of derelicty looking house it didn't look like it had been maintained in any yeah. way at all and she said they haven't done anything for my house they i'm assuming is us or the government or something now this lady was an aboriginal resident the aboriginal resident of the house built by the taxpayers out in the kimberley in western australia uh, I think you describe it as a fairly remote little yes, yes. little village. And there she stood with her mobile phone in her hand, demanding to the camera that the government do something about fixing up her house. 
Uh, Slater and Gordon, these are those, you know, no win, no fee lawyer people. Slater and Gordon are fighting this legal case because I guess there are lots of people in the same position as this lady out in the remote Kimberley. We, the taxpayer, we are being sued for not maintaining this lady's house. That and, won't work. And lots of them... Won't work. Why? Because, it, because it'll create a precedent. Once you have a property, yeah. you have an obligation to do certain things as a resident. But if you've got the government doing everything for you, you yeah, feel, no, you, I don't have to do anything. They'll yeah, do it all. Well, you know what? The, the average taxpayer won't wear that. And governments are unlikely to acquiesce to this because it'll create a tidal wave. Yes. They don't want that. Well, they so, might not be able to avoid it if they well, stop. The, they've got to stop this this uh, nanny state business where we will do everything. We'll wipe your bum if we have yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, the, the best way to help people is to enable them to lift themselves. Hmm. Yes, I totally agree with you. We should be taught that in school. It should be fundamental to all of our the tide is upbringing. On this. The tide Look, is I hope, turning. Leon, I hope you are right. The taxpayer is being sued for not maintaining these properties. Now, our mistake was probably providing the house in the first place because, I, I, I don't know, with, with Aboriginal people, uh, nobody seems to ask where the $43 billion a year that we, the taxpayer, give mm. doesn't seem to go to the Aboriginal people. Yes. Must go somewhere, though. Mm. What about a, a forensic audit? Let's try and find out where the money goes. But we, 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 we've been told that Aboriginal people live for 60,000 years happily without us, without white man or European thinking or European inventions or whatever. I don't know. I don't see why they need our money to either build the house in the first place or maintain it in the second place. Do you know, for 60,000 years, who built their houses for 60,000 years? Can't beat self-reliance. No, can't, can't beat, beat self-reliance. And it's certainly not not really all that obvious, I'm afraid. Now, the other thing I was going to bring up was um, from Monday, believe it or not, from Monday, your boss is not allowed to make contact with you outside office hours. He can't, you know, he can't send you an email. He can't change your roster. He can't uh, say, uh, listen, could you get in a little bit earlier on Monday? I, I, I need to have a talk to you. Can't, outside office hours, speak to the staff? Never heard of anything sillier. The right, it's called the right to disconnect. Now, well, that's always been its issue. <laughs> if you don't pay your bill. <laughs> They've got a right to disconnect, yeah. all right? Yeah. Same with the phone company. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think that's absolutely stupid. I don't think it'll last. If it How if it gets in? No. But I, where's I the opposition? Think... Where's the opposition saying, listen, if we get in next time, that's going? Mm. I don't hear them saying that. Yeah. I don't know. People need to understand that in a democracy, it is much better, if you want to avoid tyranny, mm. own stuff. Yeah. Have resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally if you, agree. If you don't, you are at the behest of whoever's in government. Be self-sufficient. Yep. Be self-reliant. Yep. yep. And I don't think we teach that enough. No. If you want to be independent, uh, have your own views, vote the way you want to vote, yeah. own your own stuff. Yep, no, I agree. Um, that was, clearly doesn't appeal to everybody. No. Uh, but this right to disconnect, uh, where was the debate? Labor and the Greens uh, pushed this thing through, but I don't remember any, certainly no public debate. No, I, I don't think no. there was any debate in no. the House either. No. I don't know. The, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. They think this is a very good thing for the worker. It's not. But if I was employing people... And I have, and no doubt you have. Well, it's not them and us. You're part of a team. Look. And if, you've got to talk to the team. If you, 
if you value people's contributions and you reward inspiration, which mm-hmm. is what this is about, yep. you you do all the right things and make all the right noises for mm-hmm. those people who show initiative. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's never going to change. Yeah. So my view is the less the state interferes with things, the better off people are likely to be. Simple as that. How do you get them? How do you unscramble the egg? It's too late, isn't it? Because you've got all these bureaucrats, oh. hundreds and hundreds of bureaucrats, thousands of them, and they, 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 their existence is only justified by their, their efforts to interfere with your life. We are administratively constipated, and I think that over time that'll reverse. How? Oh, people just say no. No, sorry. the public service grows. It doesn't shrink. Yeah, I know it does. But you see, people like to be the masters of their own destiny. But do they? Most do. Well, most well, do. We, we're not allowed to be. You know, it's it's. Look, we're talking about putting up the rubbish. You know, the, they've got rubbish police now who come and check your bins to make sure you've put the right thing in the right bin. Yeah. Yes. Uh, God, I don't know. Anyway, to me, if I'm employed by somebody, as far as I'm concerned, I work for him or her mm. 24 hours a day. Yep. And I remember uh, people who were very influential in my early days saying to me, look, <laughs> in radio it's very tricky because, you know, I wouldn't advise you go into it because it's a little, it's a little uh, well... Uncertain. But just remember, be the most valuable person on the staff and you will probably be yes. the last person they'll sack. But yeah. it all starts being valuable and you don't be valuable by watching the clock and then saying five o'clock, I'm going home and don't you dare contact me. Sorry, I just came in after getting a cup of coffee. Are you talking about these new federal government rules it comes in terms in, of it do comes not in, disturb? That's right, it, it, yeah. the right to disconnect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, in a lot of roles higher up in companies, you do need people to be in marketing. If something's happening, if you're dealing with different time zones overseas, things happen and you do need the ability to talk to people. And, and I think uh, the federal look, government is providing for a when, fines when this for is shown- businesses. To be a decision of a degree of folly, hmm. it'll be reversed. Everybody can see that this is not the way to go, but but what- this is ideology. They knew the voice wasn't the right <laughs> yeah, way to go yeah, either. I know, I know. But look what happened to that. So same thing will happen here. But Leon, unfortunately, when legislation gets um, baked into the um, paperwork at Parliament House, it's very it's hard to workable. it's very hard to reverse it. Yes, well, look it at is, this. But- like yeah. There's 700 pages of new industrial legislation yeah. that we're talking to Robert Gottliebson yes. about yes. a few weeks ago. And virtually every business now will need a, an entire, a whole consultant mm. just to navigate through that minefield of rubbish that Albanese's brought in. He's going to yeah. decimate every small, medium enterprise. I mean, the biggies like, you know, the big corporations, well, Telstra, see, and I'll tell you they can lab. afford it because it'll just be part of the HR. Will resist hiring too many people. Mm. So they keep below the threshold. Yeah, is that what they want? That's is that a good happening. thing? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. but that's what will happen. Mm. We, we want growth. Happen. We want productivity, yeah, yeah. and we're not going to get it by no. uh, bringing in stupid laws like this. Um, look, it's, it's, it's a simple thing to have the right attitude when you're a, an employee. Um, just be valuable. And uh, you can't be disconnected. Can't, do your job. Can't be disconnected. Yep. And, yes, you have to do your job. Um, why would they bring in something like that? Because they're stupid. But well, we, well, no, they're, they're run elected. By, no, they're run by the unions is the real reason. And as Robert Gottliebson said, this this 700-page uh, industrial relations uh, If they can't amendment. write it on one page, they shouldn't be writing it at all. Oh, Same yeah, with the Tax yeah, Act. Yeah. It should be on one bit of paper. In yeah. the story. You know how many pages the Tax Act is? Uh, how many volumes, more likely? Yeah, well, it, it, it's a lot. It's sort of 70,000 pages It's or ridiculous. It's ridiculous, No yes. one can. And you, it shouldn't be so complex that you need expensive tax lawyers to navigate your way through it. It's just absurd. Yeah. Yes. In my country, mm. there would be uh, one page of that, yep. none of this garbage that we have to put up with. Well, in the Cordo Cabinet, we would change a lot of things. Mm. What about you, Leon? 
I would probably do the same thing. Uh, Actually, you, I, I'd sack. You need to sack everyone and start again. Stack, sack all yes. the NDIs, the <clears throat> crap, and get yes, rid of everything, yeah. and just build it up from nothing. And you'd actually have something that you could run the country with half yeah. of the taxation we pay now. Yeah, and do it, do it as a meritocracy. You know, the best person well, for the job. This. Jesus accomplished all he did: twelve apostles and no press secretary. <laughs> Yes, and you it's can say the same it? thing. It is, it is, it is. It's a, it's a great demonstration. But it is also true uh, that um, uh, our first premier, well, not our first premier, possibly our best premier, um, no, I can't think of his uh, name, um, Playford. Playford, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> Playford, Thomas Playford was a, a, a brilliant man. We actually did stuff back then in South Australia, the housing trust and uh, the electricity trust and everything was just working terrifically. Mm. And we had a premier's department that consisted of three people. Mm. Yep. And electricity was probably 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Now it's 50, 60, yeah. 70. What happened to the Torrance Island power station? Well, they've actually, you know, I think they're in the process of shutting down uh, one of the two. There's Torrens Island A and B, and I think one of them is gone and the other one is going. There's a war on coal. Well, no, they're gas-fired. Yeah, I know, but there is a war on coal, and what people will soon find out, that without selling it as we do for yeah. a lot of money, a lot of social programs wouldn't be funded. No, they, yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. So how can we have... They're going to discover this sooner rather than later. But you watch. They, they don't know that the Chinese and the Indians are buying our coal for the purposes of generating electricity? Of course they do. China's so it doesn't building. matter where they, they're burning the coal, it's still a problem to the environment. These China's, people are mad. China mm. is still building new power stations every week. Yes, coal-fired. No coal-fired coal power stations. Is anyone, is anyone criticising them? No, of course not. No. Yet we were forced to tear no. ours down. Yeah. Well, you see, that's the joy of socialism. Well, I, well, People are going to watch this. Actually, Look. Maria was spot on before when she brought up the yeah. topic of um, <clears throat> transmission lines losing energy. And yes. I think you're talking about uh, someone who's trying to export power from Darwin up to Singapore, yeah, yeah. which is actually absolutely absurd. You do lose a huge amount of 10, 20, <clears throat> 30, depending on how long the run is. Just and that is the t- longest underwater cable. There's no no, no cable yeah. as long as that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you do lose a lot of energy in transmission, which in – Support of solar. One of the good things about solar is the generation is right at your house. Yeah. So even though it doesn't always mm. pay, according to how much you spend on it, it may not have a, a great payback period. You'd at least have the generation exactly where you need it. You don't like, don't lose anything. Yeah, and that's a, a good example. Just uh, just going back to the uh, right to disconnect law, which comes in on uh, Monday, and as I say, it came in without uh, any debate, and I think it's going to be a, a, a big problem um, for well, small business. <laughs> yeah. For small business, small business has a year to adjust, mm. but big business uh, or business generally, they've got to put up with this from Monday. Mm. It's, it's As you've said, it's an incentive for people to maintain a small business when yep. the government should be concentrating on getting small business to become big business. There's an old saying, how do you get a big business or a small business? You just uh, take a big business and wait <laughs> and well, it'll it'll diminish. Well, there's a, there was a joke about young Warwick Fairfax, which I won't go into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, here's another one which is kind of strange. Brain injury associated with the military. Now, it seems that there's a thing called um, shock. Uh, it's sort of um, percussion or shock waves that occur when a weapon is fired. It could be a pistol, a rifle, yes, yes. a grenade launcher, yep. Yep. whatever. Now, <clears throat> <laughs> I can't see how you could have an army and you're, you're saying there is brain injury associated with the firing of a weapon. Well, you just don't join the army. Because how are you going to run an army if Wear they aren't going to... Well, you're going to... They're going to Wear earmuffs. Feather dusters. Yeah. Uh, bows and arrows. Yeah. I find that strange, strangely hard to understand. 
hard to understand. Um, did you see the report that the, the NAB did, uh, National Australia Bank on uh, Australian uh, red tape? Ah, oh, um, the National Association of Bureaucrats have made a recommendation <laughs> that you know. uh, we can cut red tape but do it lengthwise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> make more red tape. Yes. Make, make, make more red tape. Yes. Well, the, uh, the state that is tied up more than any other state in red tape, according to the NAB, is Victoria. That's mm. the worst. Yeah. But the whole country has a problem. Yes, of course. With red tape. Administrators. Yeah, rules and regulations. This is to justify public servant jobs. I suppose it is. Well, yep. they're trying to um, produce more housing for the housing shortage, but, you know, trying to build a house, people just come up against a brick wall, so to speak, mm-hmm. with all the uh, red tape and, you know, no one's yeah. it, it all adds to cost. Look, mm. the further left <coughs> any country or city goes... Yes in its policies, the more this will happen. Yeah. Because it's just the nature of the beast. Yeah, well, the it beast just, is out of control. Is, I know, yeah, but that's the way it is. Yeah. That's the way it is. I was listening to um, a story. In fact, I tried to get the um, Australian Food and Grocery Council on the program uh, today. They, they, they sent me an email saying... Um, what sort of questions are you going to ask? So I sent back a little note saying, well, you represent the food producers and the uh, grocery, food and grocery industry in Australia. You speak for them. Uh, I I believe, from what I've heard, that big countries like, big uh, companies like uh, SPC used to be uh, SPC Ardmona mm-hmm. years ago. Um very, very big company in Victoria, Shepparton, I think. Yep. And uh, Cadbury's, which is a very big company in uh, Tasmania, they are so frustrated by red tape and rules and regulations and the unions and all of that that they are looking to set their or move their factories and their production to, well, more um, appropriate. Yeah. Simpler places. You know, yes. South Africa is getting yeah. very attractive. South America, yep. even Asia. Brazil, mm. Asia, anywhere. Yep. Now, maybe it's too late to stop these companies packing up and moving because it's quite frankly, mm. capital is far too easy to move around the world these yes. days. Uh, Jeremy, uh, Africa's very hot, won't the chocolate milk? Didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, and then they've got the monkey pox to worry about. Mm, I don't want monkey pox in my Cadbury. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, dear, oh dear. There's um, endless interesting stuff. Um, you, Leon, have you been following the um, US election scenario with um, the yes. Democratic yes. Um, week that they had there? What was it, what's it called? The National Convention. Oh, yeah, yeah, Convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoopla. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think's going to... Come out on top in Trump. terms of. Oh my God! Hope not. Well, you you, you say that won't be. Kamala is not the great. Uh, it's interesting when you. I've got some friends that I talk to in the US a fair bit, and they're kind of in the Midwest mm, yeah. area. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of stuff. Kamala Harris, fair enough, but uh, remember this. America is a capitalist country mm-hmm. and thrives on opportunity. But not, not while the Democrats. You, you, you heard that, that, that thing that was sent to me about sure, uh, yeah. California. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's California. But most of the country is not going to go like that. Not going to do it. Americans are not going to go to socialism. Well, if, if the Democrats are running California into the ground, wherever the Democrats rule... You know, they're, they're – um, I always get confused because I would assume they, that they would be red states, but in actual uh, fact they're blue. It's the other way around. It's blue. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. so the Republicans are red. How are they running – I'm not on top of this story. How are they running California into the ground? Well, I'll pass this uh, over to you yeah. um, if I can find it. Because I thought California was a fairly um, successful no, state. No, it's in their... serious trouble. It is in serious trouble. 
Oh, with all the housing shortages? And... Mm, no, it's yeah. it's uh, all the taxes oh, okay. and uh, things that this uh, Repu- uh, okay. uh, Democrat governor is putting putting yeah. together. It says it's been controlled by the left for decades. Yeah, and it's a basket case and getting worse. It does have a very high debt. And people, is, people well, are moving, mm. voting with their feet. Margaret Thatcher said it all. You eventually run out of other people's money. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the <laughs> Greens and, right. and that's what the Time Greens and, again. Yeah, and that's what Time the Greens and Labor think yeah. they can do here. Yeah. Uh, but, but the great mystery to me is why they want to. Can't they see that reward and incentive oh, are far better than fear it's and an force? An ideology that says we know what's good for you. Yeah. Um, we'll decide because you're a little enfeebled. Yes. That's that's the ideology in a nutshell. Yep, 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 yep. Geez, uh, Harry and um, Megan better watch out. There's an exit tax <laughs> for leaving now. You can't escape California unless you pay 0.4% of your net worth. But every every state that is governed by the Democrats is going to have exactly the same philosophical problems mm, yep. that they have in California. Look, I, yes. Yeah, look, I agree with those sort of policies, but I just think Trump as a person is just such a, a sociopathic, narcissistic criminal. That as a person, he's he not, couldn't be controlled. He's not electable, and that, and, and, and I'd normally agree with that side of politics yeah, well, policies. But as a person, and even his advance is no better. But what are you frightened he'll do? Well, he's going to try to dismantle the legal system to his own benefit, so that he's already he won't be able to do that. Well, he's already stacked the Supreme Court in yeah, his favour, yeah, but see, and the, the got, Constitution they can't change it. So he can put whoever he likes in. Uh, well, he's, he doesn't. There'll be a limitation as to what he can do. He has no regard for the constitution yeah, now, yeah, as seen has by January the sixth yeah. of twenty twenty one. He has or hasn't. There's only a limited amount he can actually do. He controls the military, commander in chief. His his wavering finger is potentially on the big red button. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy hasn't got the brains of a six year old. Look at the well, way he I speaks. I think that's actionable, actually. <laughs> you look at the way he speaks. He doesn't even put a sense. You know, he says, they're nasty to me, and that's the best he can come out. And he says, let's talk about policy and not people, when he was talking about Kamala Harris. That's exactly what he does to everyone else. He abuses them. He yes. abuses he's, he's Kamala Harris. He's strangely uh, autistic. And he's or never talked about policies. Uh, dyslectic or um, uh, dyspractic. Is another thing yeah. that he might have. Pity, I don't know. It's a pity John Bruni wasn't in this morning because I know he he's got. A yeah, lot no, to he's got a, he's got the flu. He couldn't come. No, in. but he's yeah. got a lot to say about Trump as well. Yes, in the same manner as I'm portraying. Yes, well, I, I sense that he's dangerous. He's a bit of a mm. bull in a china shop. He's no mm. diplomat, but well, the Queen uh, re- in her recently released book had some comments to make about uh, how, how nasty he was to her. The Queen. Mm. Uh, yeah, there was a story this oh, week about it. And I didn't see is, that. This is a book that was just been released, I think. The uh, Queen, I don't think the Queen's ever written a book, has she? No, uh, maybe it was, perhaps it was written on her behalf. Well, a sort of a biography. I don't think yeah. the Queen would ever no. okay, the go public. Was, um, Even from the grave, I think she'd be diplomatic. Mm. A new biography of Queen Elizabeth II claims she was less than impressed with the former president after he paid her a visit. Yeah. And this was uh, 2018 when he came for tea at Windsor Castle. Yeah. He was president then? Yeah, he got in in 2016. End of 16. Yeah. Yeah. End of 16 to end of 20. And he wouldn't leave... (laughs) <laughs> the building without being pushed out. Yeah. So yeah. she wasn't impressed with him. She said he was rude and... Um, but I hear people say that when he was in power, uh, he did a lot of good things. Now, uh, um, I, I, you should watch I don't know, but that's what I've been told. Four Corners a few weeks ago had a... Oh, the ABC, come no, on. No, no, no. This was one of his inside, uh, his uh, guys that worked with him um, and they interviewed him. And the, the guy called him an, uh, an effing idiot. Just the, he wouldn't understand any briefings. He'd sit there in military briefings and ask ridiculous questions. He would not pay attention. Mm. He didn't take his job seriously. Yeah. And I know it might be a bit biased with the ABC, but I think it was a good window into people that actually had to work with him for that for those four years, and to hear their honest, I believe, honest comments about him. Yeah. So yeah. it's a really great show to watch because I just think he's yeah. too dangerous a person to contemplate coming back. Well, clearly a lot of people are contemplating. Uh, uh, 
Apart from being deranged, demented, and narcissistic. <laughs> Why don't you tell us what you really think? <laughs> Please. I mean, this one, it's a fact of the matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, not yeah. fit for purpose, fit well, for office. Well, I, I agree with Leon. I think there's a strong possibility that he will be elected. Well, I think heaven help us. Well, I say heaven help us about the other side because they, um, California is a mm. microcosm of exactly what this woman would do uh, on steroids. Hmm. I mean, there ain't no I third think, alternative, is there? I didn't there? think they were that badly off, but I'll probably have to research that a bit more. Well, I'd, I would like you to do that. I'd mm. like you to, 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 you know, just tell me whether this guy is over the top when he, he sent me this stuff on, on was California. That, uh, was that Cory Bernani? Um, no, I think that it was. That was his article, I think. I don't know. But uh, he didn't send it to me. Right. Somebody sent it to me. Yeah, okay. I'll look, look, I'll have a read of that. I'll have a read of that. Yeah. Have a read of that. Speaking of the ABC, David Anderson has uh, resigned, managing director. Mm. He's hung up his headphones or whatever managing directors hang up when they hang up. He's resigned and I have no doubt they'll probably place somebody in there of the same... I used to have got the, uh, the top <laughs> man now, Kim Williams, who did a great job running Foxtel. Yeah, well, he's an interesting character. I don't know. I, well, explain that to me. Did he run Foxtel well? Into the ground. Ooh, oh, talk to me and Carol. He's married to. Uh, he's married to. Not that that's important, but he, he's married to Gough Whitlam's daughter. Yeah, that'd be right. Um, you talk to people who've had a direct experience with Foxtel in mm. the years he was running it, mm. and it was an absolute disgraceful organisation to try to deal with. And you talk to Carol, and she had the same issues as. Well, yeah, they're very easy to to get signed up. But when it comes to cancelling, you, 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 you can't their, cancel. You ring their call centre and they try to upsell you, they tell lies, they wouldn't do what you asked and you still got the same uh, program set. Or, well, know, it's now on the market and I think losing money. You'd be, uh, to my opinion, one could be forgiven for thinking that you would be silly to sign up to Foxtel mm. when there's so many great alternatives around with internet streaming. Well, I don't know. It's It's got football, hasn't it? Uh, it? It's more... I think it's more for people who are into sport. That's the Well, when you've got... Of, they paid all that money to get the rights to broadcast sport. How could they be losing money? Hmm. No, Foxtel is probably mainly now for people into football and whatever they do, sports. Well, I don't, I don't watch it. I certainly don't watch it. But I saw him on television hmm. um, with his... Um, Lanyard, which was a LGBTIQ, um, what is what is it? Um, rainbow thing. Yeah, this is the other thing, isn't it? With these big corporates and ABCs and Qantas, they th- and Woolworths, they think it's their platform to use to push their well, they think, ideas. They think it's they forget in- it's the shareholders who own it. They think it's inclusive, but the point is, you're only included as long as you see the world as they in their way. see yeah. the world. Well, Aaron Joyce, Eckhart, who's a business advisor, reckons that companies ought to steer completely clear of this mm. because as soon as they take a position, mm. a reasonable proportion of their market absolutely is alienated. So they are yeah. much better yeah. taking a completely neutral Be position neutral. on this. Well, yeah. Alan Joyce used That's what he tells them. Alan Joyce, yep. Joyce used Qantas planes to emblazon his um, Aboriginal, uh, you know, his the first A220 no, delivered the other day, his, Aboriginal certainly his ideology. painting, um, LGBTI pictures yeah. on it and uh, what else has he done? Um, Woolworths with their in-store promotion of the, the voice. Well, that's right. I mean, a lot of corporates did the AFL. I bet well, Woolworths in no. J- 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 the um, Australia Day this year. Woolworths had banned, I think, the sale of yeah. well, flags, well, Australian well, flags. Well, let's think. Some of the biggest corporations in the country, West Farmers yeah. and uh, uh, Coles and Woolworths, uh, Qantas, the AFL, they all endorsed publicly the voice. Yeah, but they're spending um, shareholder money. Shareholders' That's not money. Yeah. to do that. And no. just because one person at the top has a particular um, idea or a, a affiliation with a, you know, a cause, yeah. it's not his job to spend shareholders' money to promote it. And the same with Woolworths. I call them Wokeworths now. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just totally inappropriate. Okay. And it, it doesn't flow through well to many customers. 
who we, we got to we got to ring the Animal ring Welfare him. League in a little while. But um, Ana, Anastasia Palaszczuk. I know what everybody thinks of Anastasia Palaszczuk, but um, she's no longer the Premier of Queensland. But she's joined the board of Australia Post. Oh, former Queensland Premier who quit politics. She's accepted a job while, of course, still on a substantial parliamentary pension. Uh, she'll be paid $125,000 a year to um, join the board. I wonder what that'll do to the price of stamps. <laughs> very, very, very little, mm. I would think. Yeah. Are you there, Anthony? Hi, Jeremy. I am. How are you going? Uh, good. Just hang on for a second. Hang on there. Hang on for a second. I'll just finish finish this. Um, I can't see what Anastasia Palaszczuk would add to the Cost. board. Cost. Cost. <laughs> well said. But uh, I guess she's got contacts and uh, influence, maybe. I don't know. But this, what I wanted to throw into the mix before we get Anthony on, what I wanted to throw into the mix was this double standard that these politicians have. They can leave politics today and they are on their pension for life with all the other perks, and they can go and get a job this afternoon. Yeah. And that job does not affect their pension. It should. One, it should. For, for mere mortals, it does. Yes. You know. Or you do it either. either yeah, sure. <laughs> we, we have their system or yes. they have our system, but yes. they can't sort of have this separate system. Mm. That's fair, isn't it? Yep. Totally agree. Because if, if, I, if I'm on a, a pension, I then... That pension is affected dollar for dollar. Yeah, of course it is. With every day I work. We need to do a audit of the ruling elite yeah. and ensure that the rules that apply to the mere mortal yep. apply to them. Oh, Simple. I, look, I couldn't agree more. Simple. As an animal lover, you will appreciate this segment, Leon Biner. Um, I've got uh, Anthony Cochran on the line, and he's from the Animal Welfare League. And we're going to try and find a – I don't know. Anthony, is it a pussycat or a puppy dog? What have you got? So I wouldn't call him a puppy dog. Uh, he's seven years old. Oh, that's... Um But he is a Kelpie, and his name is Boots. Boots the Kelpie. Yeah. What's he look like? So he's black and brown, a traditional Kelpie face, body, etc. cetera. Um, he's got brown – Boots, I suppose, which might yeah. be why he's called boots. Uh, black oh. body and a bit of a brown face. Brown socks, brown boots. Yeah. How did you come he's by gorgeous. him? Uh, I don't know. Um, we're having a lot of, um, I guess, people in the community rehoming their pets lately, um, just because of cost of living and the rental crisis and such. So, um, I would imagine he's a surrender. That must be the hardest decision that a family can make. You know, I, I can't afford to keep the dog, or I. My landlord won't let me keep my dog. I think that would be shocking. Yeah, I couldn't imagine how painful that must be. Just awful. So Boots is um, desexed, vet checked. Yeah. Yep. Vaccinated. He is. Microchipped. He's a lot. Microchipped. Yep. Um, we we set pets up uh, as much as possible so that um, they can enter their new homes, their new families, and don't have to worry about a thing. All right. That sounds lovely. How much? Uh, he's two hundred and fifty dollars. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Does he come with a bandana? <laughs> he's not wearing one in his photos, but I'm sure we could organise something. No, I don't know. I was trying to think last week what what that bandana does. It it's sort of um, it's it's got pheromones in it or something, has it? Yeah. So certainly you you can. I can't remember what it's called for dogs, but for cats there is something called Fellaway spray that you can certainly spray on. Um, their bed or their their blankets, whatever that does help calm them down. There is an equivalent to dogs, but I can't remember what it's called. Does that work on children? <laughs> You're asking the wrong guy. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll try it and let you know. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay, now the Animal Welfare League. Uh, what's the website and what's the phone number? Yep. So you can call us on eight three four eight thirteen hundred and chat to our friendly team. Uh, or you can visit our website, awl.org.au. Anthony Cochran, as always, thank you very much. And listen, um, uh, we'll just remind people that if you, you, you're you writing your will or you're not changing your will but amending your will, we should do, all do that regularly. Uh, spare a thought for if you're looking for causes to which you can leave a little money, just remember the Animal Welfare League because they do wonderful work. And uh, you you would rely on, to a certain extent, 
uh, people remember, remembering you in their will, wouldn't you? Absolutely. It's one of our um, biggest funding streams, so we very much appreciate that. I will say as well, we have a program called Happy Hearts. Happy Hearts? Uh, Happy Hearts. So anyone who does choose um, to generously choose to leave us a gift in their will um, and they've got pets, um, if the sad event happens where they pass away, mm. uh, we will take their pet in and look after them. And well, that's a lovely, that's a lovely thought. Uh, <clears throat> I was reminded a little bit earlier that uh, the French actor who died sadly, well, he was 88, that's a fair life, isn't it? Um, Alain Delon, uh, he, in his will, I don't know if he left anything to the Animal Welfare League, but he was a very wealthy man and a selfish man because he left in his will the desire that his dog was put down when he died and buried with him. Yes, I saw that. Very sad. Isn't that awful? Yes, I don't recommend that. I do recommend, um, even if it's not us, leaving a bequest to an animal charity, and most animal charities will be able to take your pet in if that does happen. Yeah, no, I think that's good. You're in my will. I can promise you that. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Have been for years. All right, look have up. You, have, you told us, have you told us this before? We might have to get our, our team to give you a call. No, well, I've, I've, you're already there. You don't have to do that. No, I know, but it's always nice to get you down and give you a tour and just show where your, what your support does for animals in need. Oh, okay, all right. If, if you've got an idle moment, that could be terrific. Th- thanks, No Anthony. worries. We'll make it happen. Thanks, Jeremy. All the best. Bye. We have it on. Just like a Starting in a room Lately it's Sailing away to Kilo Here's looking at you, okay. Missing all the things we did. We can find it once again. Just like they did at Kilo We had it all. We had it all. Just like Bogey and Bacall. Good song. Do you like that? Yeah, good song. Yeah. We um, were trying to find somebody. In fact, we'd lined up Jerry Harvey to come on the show this morning about half past 11 to talk to us about um, barbecues. <laughs> I'd slip in a few questions about the economy as well. Have you heard him in full flight? He is a, v- good. a very good. <clears throat> he used to come on your show too, didn't he? Yeah. Yep. No, he's a very good media operator, Jerry Harvey. Uh, but he was on a road trip and he, he was not contactable in the end. Um, but uh, uh, we, w- we wanted to talk about Kevin Rudd's purchase of a $15,000 barbecue uh, for the Australian Embassy in Washington. Can you, can you imagine somebody spending $15,000 on a, a barbecue? Sounds to me like he bought a patio. Well, I suppose that you can get those outdoor kitchen things, yeah. but why you wouldn't do that? They're not fifteen grand, though. They're less than that. <laughs> anyway, I, I spoke to uh, his office. He's, oh, he'd love to talk about that. He's got an opinion on that. Anyway, he couldn't make it in the end. And Caroline, uh, you've been trying to um, what are you well, barbecues we, galore? No, the Weber Gallery. Oh, the Weber Gallery. Yes, yes. Because remember when Weber started? They oh, I did do. a big promotion outside 5DN. Yeah, and it was a one-man operation. Um, I don't know whether he did that. Where, where would you have been at that time? You would have been in uh, at uh, 5AD. No, probably in Melbourne then. Oh, because it, was, it, was it, se- it would have been in the 70s. KA. KA, okay. Well, um, he, he had this thing which looked a little bit like a spaceship a, a, a kettle thing, right? And we all know it now as the as the um, barbecue, but back then it was uh, it was a, a talking point. But he set this thing up on Tint Street, right at the front door of Five D N. And as the people went in and out of the radio station, the doors opened, obviously, and closed. And in those moments, the smell, the smell of, and I think it was lamb from memory. He was barbecuing lamb, and the smell was such. I said, what, 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 what? In the studio, we got the smell. And I said, where, where is that coming from? What's that? 
Anyway, we resolved. Were you producing at the time? No, not then. No, 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 no. Of course you weren't. Uh, it was probably Paul Flanagan. And I suggested, look, go out and get him. And I can't remember his name, but he was the man who invented uh, or brought back from America the Weber. I think it's an Australian invention, in fact, as I, I think thought about it. I it was. It. Yeah. Anyway, he's now... I don't know if he's sold out or he's still doing it, but he's got a he's got a sort of a barbecue university on Fullerton Road, hasn't he? And he calls it what the barbecue gallery. Yes. Anyway, well, no Weber gallery. Oh, we, we, Weber gallery. Okay. Well, and we couldn't find anyone to talk to us about well I barbecues and because um, Jerry Harvey had cancelled. Maybe mm. that's because of um, the plane strike in Sydney because he had been away during the week. Yeah. Um, so without much notice for them, I rang just before 11 to the Weber <clears> Gallery and they said, oh, yes, we'll find you someone to speak to in half an hour. But unfortunately, they never rang back. Oh, God. Okay. I don't know. If I was selling barbecues or widgets or anything at a radio station, particularly one that broadcasts to the world, rang me up and said, hey, listen, would you mind coming on and telling me about barbecues and I'll slip in some promotion of my products? <laughs> why Why the hell wouldn't you do it? Anyway, a missed opportunity, fellas. So sorry. I got a, Speaking of opportunities, I have an opportunity here to just tell you a little bit about one of our sponsors. In fact, I'll tell you about both our sponsors while I've got a moment because you can't, as Leon Biner and Caroline... No, you can't do very much without sponsors in this business. The Rising Sun Inn, a very valued sponsor at 60 Bridge Street at Kensington. It's a very oldy-worldy pub, or really it started out life as an inn. And Leon's nodding his head. Have you been there? Yeah, lovely food. Haven't been there for a while, but it's great. No, it, it is. It's one of those places that should become, in people's lives, a regular because they look after their regulars. Uh, as you say, a great kitchen and a great cellar, and the chef must be pretty darn good as well. A good good menu, and a, a great wine cellar, as I said. Uh, wonderful service. Grant is the guy who who owns it and runs it and loves it. We've got to get Jackie back in, haven't we? Yes. Because Jackie and uh, Jackie and Grant are a, a great team, and they run a fantastic operation. If you uh, are having a, a quiet dinner for two, a romantic dinner, you you, you want a product launch, you uh, celebrating a, a birthday or an anniversary or something like that, give Grant a call. He will look after you. And you tell him you heard about it on the Court of Public Opinion. He'll do the rest. Uh, 8333-0721. 8333-0721. And the other wonderful South Australian... Well, I was going to say company, but it's an institution like the um, Rising Sun. The gallery on uh, Melbourne Street in North Adelaide, Elder Fine Art. Uh, Jim Elder and Helen uh, have a lifetime of experience when it comes to art. Elder Fine Art. And they, four times a year, have a world-famous auction. So if you are looking to sell, nothing like selling or broadcasting to the world. Why, why, why not broaden your horizons? More customers. <clears throat> anyway, they they are bound to have a. Uh, where are we now? We're August, so there'll be one more auction before the end of the year, and it'll be a big one. So Jim will be looking for uh, Australian and international paintings. If you have interesting or prominent or important art, and you would like to sell it. <clears throat> Or you'd like to get it valued. Uh, all you've got to do is get a no-obligation appraisal. If you ring, I'll give you a couple of numbers, 8267 72869, 8267 2869. Or Jim's mobile, you can call him on that. It's 041 78 and you can look at their website too, which is Elder Fine Art, all one word, elderfineart.com.au. Uh, appraising all works by noted Australian and international artists now. And if you want to know...